Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless. This is the quiz show where all the questions have been asked to 100 people before the show and all our contestants have to do is come up with the answers those 100 people couldn't think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hello, my name's Terry. This is my daughter, Sarah. We're from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Couple number two. Hello, my name's Slim. This is my wife, Marianne, and we live in Hackney in London. Couple number three. Hi, my name's Jeff, and this is my friend and work colleague, Michael, from we're from Belfast. And finally, couple number four. Hello, my name's Neil, this is my friend Yoon, and we're both students at the University of Glasgow. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Squishing the green shoots of stupidity with a thumping pair of size 16 brogues. It's my pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hi, uh... <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> afternoon. And to you, afternoon. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I tell you, we've had an awful lot of contestants on this show over the years, because we have eight people every day and we've done f nearly 500 shows. So it's very rare that we come across, like, a name we've never had on the show before. We've had pretty yeah. much every name before. But today, we've got a brand new name on the show. I was just looking through the, uh, the records. We've never had anyone called Neil on the show before. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> looking at our four groups today, we've got representatives of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Round one is going to be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say that. OK, thank you very much indeed. Now, all our questions on pointers have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers our 100 people couldn't find. Now, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer. Of course, that's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Luke and Chloe didn't win the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at a nice round £4,000. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, in this first round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there's to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so obviously try and make sure that's not you. Our first category today is... <laughs> <laughs> there we go, completes the set. Wales. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Welsh heroes. Welsh heroes, Richard. On each pass, we're going to give you seven clues to Welsh heroes. People appeared on the list, the 100 Welsh heroes. They weren't all actually born in Wales, but they're all uh, considered Welsh heroes. Uh, there's 14 in all to get in the studio, 14 in all to get at home. Very best of luck. OK, so we are looking for the Welsh heroes described on this board, and here we have... Author who created Willy Wonka, 1916 to 1990. Lead singer of the Manic Street Preachers, born 1969. Gang of Four politician who co-founded the SDP, 1920 to 2003. The famous singer, born with the surname Woodward, born 1940. The Labour politician regarded as the father of the NHS, 1897 to 1960. The actress who won an Oscar for Chicago, born 1969. And the scrum half, often described as Wales's greatest rugby player, born 1947. I'll read those all one final time. And they are the author who created Willy Wonka, 1916 to 1990, the lead singer of the Manic Street Preachers, born 1969, the Gang of Four politician who co-founded the SDP, 1920 to 2003, famous singer born with the surname Woodward, born 1940, Labour politician regarded as the father of the NHS, 1897 to 1960, the actress who won an Oscar for Chicago, born 1969, and the scrum half, often described as Wales's greatest rugby player, born 1947. Now, Terry and Sarah, you all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Now, I tell you what, Terry, last time you went first. I mean, you left first, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, what was it? Can what we was... oh, That's right, yes, you, you, uh, you, you didn't know your arsenic from your silver, did you? That was, uh... <laughs> Easy mistake to make. It is. Uh, now then, Terry, remind us what you do. I work as a, uh, an account manager for a, a retail company. OK, and how are you feeling about Welsh heroes? I think I know one or two of those. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to play safe, though. And I think it, it's Catherine Zeta-Jones who won the Oscar for Chicago. Catherine Zeta-Jones, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Catherine Zeta-Jones. Absolutely right. 
35. 35 for Catherine Zeta-Jones. In 13th on that list of Welsh heroes, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Married to Michael Douglas, of course. Uh, now then, Slim. Yes. Slim, welcome to the show. What do you do, Slim? Well, I manage buildings during the day, but I'm a musician all the rest of the time. You played with some pretty formidable names, haven't you? I have. I came into the business through Ian Dury and the Blockheads, but I won a competition. But they let me play with them. Wow. <laughs> and what do you play? Um, with them, I played organ, but I'm known as an accordion player and I play a bit of piano. OK, how are you on Welsh Heroes, Slim? Um, I know a couple of them. I did say I was going to play safe, so I think I probably will, actually. I was, I've been tempted to try some of the others. Well... Uh, yeah. But I'll stick with the music. Famous singer born with the surname with, with Tom Jones. Tom Jones. OK, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Tom Jones. It's right. Very well done indeed. 36. Not bad. Came third on the list, Tom Jones, amazingly. Now then, Jeff. Hi. Jeff, welcome back to the show. You were on last time. Remind us what happened. Um, we got a question on sporting greats, where then how much money they earn, basically. Just about very close answers, but just unlucky. Yeah, no, you, exactly. You left, but for the right reasons. High scorers because you were taking a sort of punt. Now then, so we're looking for the names of these Welsh people. I'm pretty sure of one which I think would be very low, but I, I'm not, I don't want to get it wrong in that way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the Labour politician regarded as the father of the NHS, Anayan Bevan. OK, Anayan Bevan, sometimes pronounced Anurin Bevan, says, Jeff, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Is right. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Best score so far, Jeff. Good answer, Jeff. Yeah, Nye Bevan. And uh, he actually came top of the poll of the greatest Welsh heroes. And Ewan. Welcome to the show. You're at Glasgow University. Yep. What are you reading there? Yeah, I'm studying medicine. And what do you like getting up to when you're not doing your medicine? Well, yeah. apart from studying medicine, I've got a part-time job at the cinema in Glasgow. So that's where I get to see lots of free films in my spare time there. Good stuff. Um, how are you feeling about these Welsh? It's not the best board in the world. I've only been to Wales once and I wasn't there for very long. <laughs> but I think I know the top one is um, Roald Dahl, but I think that's going to score pretty high. I don't know the lead singer of the Manic Street Preachers. Um, I don't know the scrum half, but I'm going to take a punt, I think on the Gang of Four politician who co-founded the SDP. His name sounds Welsh, but I don't know if I'm confusing him with someone else. I'm going to say David Owen. David Owen, says Ewan. OK, David Owen, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. You're right, it does sound like it ought to be Welsh, but I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. It scores you the maximum of 100 points. Sorry, you and actually three of the Gang of Four had Welsh-sounding names. You just chose the wrong one. Uh, not David Owen, not Shirley Williams either. Roy Jenkins was the answer you needed. Would have scored two points. Would have been a terrific answer. Uh, the rugby player, the scrum half, was Gareth Edwards. Would have scored you nine points. Uh, the author who created Willy Wonka, you uh, and should have gone for it. It is Roald Dahl. Uh, would have scored you 34 points. So wouldn't have done an awful lot of damage actually. And the least thing the Manic Street preachers. I can think of his first two names: are James Dean. I yeah, James Dean Bradfield. Bradfield. Would have scored six points. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at our scores. 20, the best score of that pass. Very well done. Jeff and Michael looking pretty strong on the back of that. Then Terry and Sarah on 35. Then up to 36, where we find Slim and Marianne. And then up to 100, I'm afraid, where we find Ewan and Neil. Uh, now, Neil, you'll have first pick of the next board. Use it wisely. Find a nice low-scoring answer, and maybe that'll be enough to keep you in the game. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, let's put seven more Welsh people on the board, and here they are. Liberal Prime Minister, 1863 to 1945. Bass baritone opera singer, born 1965. World record-breaking hurdler, born 1967. Author of the play Under Milk Wood, 1914 to 53. The atheist philosopher who won the 1915 Nobel Prize for Literature, 1872 to 1970. The footballer who scored 28 goals in 73 games for Wales, born 1961. And the actor who starred in the film Cleopatra, 1925 to 1984. I'll read those all one final time. Liberal Prime Minister, 1863 to 1945. Bass baritone opera singer, born 1965. World record-breaking hurdler, born 1967. Author of the play Under Milk Wood, 1914 to 53. 
atheist philosopher who won 1950 Nobel Prize for Literature, 1872 to 1970, footballer who scored 28 goals in 73 games for Wales, born 1961, and the actor who starred in the film Cleopatra, 1925 to 84. Now, remember, we are looking for the names of these Welsh people, and, Neil, you're going to have to try and find the one the fewest of our 100 people knew. Uh, Neil, what are you reading? Um, medicine as well. Oh, all right, two medics. Yes, they're stars. OK, now then. <laughs> how do you find this board, Neil? Uh, you want to try and take a pun at something, but... I, I'm going with... I'm thinking maybe people's politics is not really the best, so I'm going to go with a Liberal Prime Minister. It's David Lloyd George. David Lloyd George, says Neil. Now, there's no red line for you, you're the high scorers, but let's see how many people said David Lloyd George. He's right. We're still going down, Neil. 22. 122, your total. Well played, Neil, giving himself a chance there. Yeah, he was actually born in Manchester, David Lloyd George, but, but grew up almost exclusively in Wales. He's a fierce Welsh nationalist. The only Welsh politician to be Prime Minister as well. Michael, welcome back to the show. Uh, now, remind us what you do, Michael. I'm a computer programmer. I, I write mobile applications for personal safety. OK, now then, the Welsh. Not a strong subject for me. Um, I'm going to try and play it safe, hopefully. Uh, the author of the play, Under Milkwood, Dylan Jones. Dylan Jones. OK, Dylan Jones, says Michael. OK, well, you're on 20, you're safe. Even if you get this wrong, you score 100 points, you still won't overtake the high score as Neil and Ewan. But you're saying Dylan Jones, the author of Under Milk Wood. Let's see if that's right. Bad luck! Incorrect answer, Michael. Scores you 100 points, but you're through to the next round anyhow. Not uh, Dylan Jones, I'm afraid. Dylan Jones is the editor of GQ magazine, if that's... Uh, <laughs> but he, he was not on that list. Now, Marianne. Hello. Hello and welcome to the show. Great to have you here. What do you do, Marianne? I'm a teacher. What do you teach? I teach primary school children, so Lovely. any age at primary, any subject. Good stuff. And what are your hobbies? Um, I like to do crosswords, cryptic crosswords. Ooh. I've done the same crossword in the same newspaper every week for 20 years. Very good. And you always finish it? Usually. Yeah. So remember, we want the names of these Welsh people. Mm, I think I know two of them and one I'm more sure of than the other. So I think the author of Under Milkwood was Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, says Marianne. Now, 122 is our high score. Neil and Ewan on 122. You're on 36. 85 or less sees you through to the next round. There's your red line. Dylan Thomas, is that right? How many people said it? Very well done, and you're through. Brilliant. 34. Fantastic. 70 is your total. Well done, Marianne. Dylan Thomas came seventh, uh, born in Swansea. Thanks very much. Now then, Sarah. Sarah, welcome back. Now, this time, you must not leave in round one. Yeah. That can't no. happen. We can't join the 400 club. Nope. <laughs> simply, <laughs> simply can't. Um, Sarah, you're the last person to have this board. Talk us through it, if you can. Right. The footballer... I think it's Ian Rush, but it could possibly be Mark Hughes. Um, I'm not sure about the actor. Is it Cary Grant? I don't know. Um, no idea about the philosopher. The only opera singer I can think of around that age would be Leslie Garrett, but I don't think bass baritone is her. In the mornings? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for the hurdler, who I think is Colin Jackson. You're going to say Colin Jackson for the hurdler. OK. The high score is on 122, and Neil and Ewan. You're on 35, so 86 or less sees you through. There's your red line. Colin Jackson, is that right? And if it is, how many people said it? It's right, and you are through to the next round. Very well done. That's a great answer, Sarah. Look at it going down to 14. Very well done. 49, your total. Well played, Sarah, the brilliant Colin Jackson. That's much better than last time, isn't it? it is. 49, very well done. <laughs> Let's go through the rest. You were right about the footballer. There was Ian Rush, and he would have scored you six points. The actor who starred in the film Cleopatra... Richard Burton. Richard Burton. Would have scored you 45 points. That's a, uh, a big score. The atheist philosopher is Bertrand Russell. Would have scored you two points. And do you know the bass baritone opera I'm going to say Bryn Terfel. You're correct. Oh, phew. <laughs> well done. Would have scored three points, Bryn Terfel. Very well done to anyone who got all of those. That's terrific uh, work if you did. 
Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, the pair will be leaving us with their high score of 122. They've only just got here. It's, uh, it's Neil and Ewan. Uh, anyway, we'll see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much indeed. Uh, but meantime, thanks very much for playing. Neil and Ewan. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So, obviously, there's only going to be room for two pairs in our head-to-head -head round, so one of the pairs in front of me now will have to leave us at the end of this round. Very best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is film. Film. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many actors or actresses in Pulp Fiction as they could. Looking for the name of any man or woman who received an acting credit in uh, Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film Pulp Fiction, please. Very, very best of luck. OK. Thanks very much. Now, Sarah, you are going first. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? I have, a long time ago. Mm. Um, can anybody think of the main actors in it? Um, but one who's a main actor that has a bit of a smaller part. I'm going to go for Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Bruce Willis. Yes, well remembered. Bruce Willis. 24. That's a good answer. Bruce Willis. Good work, Sarah. He plays the boxer Butch Coolidge, who's paid to take a dive and doesn't. Now, then, Marianne. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? I haven't. OK. It's not the stuff for primary okay. school teachers, I don't no, think. No, no. I'm going to have a guess at a name of someone I think's in it, but okay. with no confidence whatsoever. John Travolta. John Travolta, says Marianne. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said John Travolta. It's right. Oh, it's a punishingly high score, though. 66, John Travolta. Yes, he plays Vincent Vega in uh, Pulp Fiction. He's the brother of Mr Blonde in Reservoir Dogs. Ah. Now then, Michael. So, remember, we're looking for the name of any actor or actress from Pulp Fiction. I'm going to go for a lesser-known actress from my hometown in Derry, uh, Brona Gallagher. Brona Gallagher. Gallagher. Oh, Gallagher! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if that's right, Brona Gallagher. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. That could be a brilliant answer. It's right. And it's pointless. Very, very well done indeed, Michael. That, uh, that adds £250 to today's jackpot. Tick the total up to £4,250. And it scores you nothing, Michael. Very well done indeed. Great answer. That landed very nicely, Michael, didn't it? Yeah, Brona Gallagher, most people in the UK will know her from the commitments she stars in that, and also in uh, Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace. Thanks very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at our scores. Well, Michael, what a fantastic start to that round. Uh, a score of nothing for Michael and Jeff. 24 is where we find Sarah and Terry, and then up to 66 where we find Marianne and Slim. Slim, we're going to need a low score from you, or it'll be crosswords <laughs> between you. Oh. <clears throat> We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, so remember, Jeff, we are looking for the name of any actor or actress who is credited with an appearance in Pulp Fiction. Um, you're on nothing. Brilliant score from Michael there. 66, the high score from Marianne. Uh, so if you can score 65 or less, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Um, I'm going to go for Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. Here's your red line. Get below that, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many people said Samuel L. Jackson. You're through. Very well done. 36. <laughs> that gives you a total of 36. Yeah, he plays John Travolta's uh, partner in crime in that film, Samuel L. Jackson. Now then, Slim, we require from you a really low score. What are you going to go for? Tim Roth. Tim Roth, says Slim. No red line for you, you're the high scorers, but let's see how many people said Tim Roth. It's right. It's a good answer. Look at that. Down it goes seven. Very well done indeed. Second lowest score of the round. Seven for Tim Roth, taking your total up to 73. Well played, Slim. Yeah, he's in the, the scene that sort of bookends the film at both ends. He was Mr Orange in Reservoir Dogs as well. Yeah. 
Terry. Yes. The last one to answer. Now, you have to score 48 or less to avoid overtaking Slim and Marianne on 73. All the answers that I knew have gone. Um, and I'm getting mixed up with two actresses by name. She was a, a blonde girl that was in, in the film that went to the cafe, the diner with him. I'll have to give you Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon says, Terry, Reese Witherspoon, here is your red line. That's what you have to get below. Let's find out the Reese Witherspoon. Is it right? How many people said it? If it is. Bad luck. Bad luck, Terry. I'm sorry. That's an incorrect answer, as I think you knew. That scores you the maximum of 100 points and takes your total up to 124. Richard. Sorry, Terry. When sometimes if a name just gets stuck in your head, there's literally nothing you can do about it, is there? Are you talking about the character who was with Tim Roth at the beginning in the diner? No, the one that was Travol with Travolta doing the dancing in the... Ah, well, that's Uma Thurman. That's, yeah. Uma Thurman is who you're thinking of. Uma Thurman would have scored you 42 points and would just have seen you through. Uh, the woman who's with Tim Roth in the diner is Amanda Plummer, and she would have scored you six points. Uh, go through a few lower scorers here. Ving Rames would have scored you six. Harvey Keitel would have scored you six. Eric Stoltz would have scored you five. Rosanna Arquette, three. Christopher Walken and Steve Buscemi would have both scored you two points. Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers, though. We've already heard one. There she is, Brona Gallagher. Uh, although you've said it much nicer than, than I just said it. <laughs> How would you say Gallagher again? Gallagher. Uh, there you go. It's effortless, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Angela Jones, Carl Allen, both would have been pointless answers. Chandler Lindauer, Don Blakely and Dwayne Whitaker. Well done if you said any of these. Julia Sweeney, Laura Lovelace and Vanessa Valentino. Um, let's take a look at the top three answers. We've actually heard all three of them already. Jeff gave us Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, would have got 36. Terry tried to give us Uma Thurman, which would have scored you 42. And John Travolta, we've already heard from Marianne, with 66. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, I'm afraid that means at the end of our second round, Terry and Sarah, we have to say goodbye to you. Well, it was round one last time, so you've done precisely twice as well <laughs> this time. But, uh, no, I had high hopes of, of seeing you through to the final today. Oh, well, okay. we have to say goodbye, but Terry Thank and Sarah, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thanks so much for playing. Lovely Thank contestants. You. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Slim and Marianne, Michael and Jeff. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £4,250. <laughs> now, to decide who gets to play for that money, you're now going to go head-to-head. -head. You are now allowed to confer, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here is your first question, and it concerns... Former capitals. Former capitals, Richard. We're going to show you five pictures now of cities which used to be the capitals of their respective countries. We need you to tell us the country they used to be capital of, please. So, looking for the country, please, of one of these five. OK, let's reveal our five former capitals, and here they are. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Five former capital cities. Slim and Marianne, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Do you recognise any of them? I can't. Well, the only former capital we can think of is Bonn, and it doesn't look like any of those. A. We're going for A Germany. A, a Germany. A Germany. So Slim and Marianne. A Germany. Michael and Jeff, the board is entirely yours. Talk us through it and see if you can have a punt at any of them. We think that C is in the former capital of Turkey, which might be Constantinople. D looks for me like it could well be New York, which is obviously now Washington. So we'll go for D, uh, New York. We need the name of a country. Oh, um, okay. US of A. OK, D, USA. So we have A, Germany, D, USA. Slim and Marianne said A, Germany. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. 
No. I've read Nick Craig Dancer. Michael and Jeff have said D, USA. All you have to be is correct with this to win the point. Let's find out if you are. No! Two incorrect answers, which means after one question, you're still level on nil-nil. Richard. Really, really, really tough. Let's bring them up one by one. Now, A. Only one I think I know. What do you think that is? I think that's Agra in India. It's Calcutta in India, but it's oh. uh, India is the answer. That would have scored you 17 points. That's the Victoria Memorial in, uh, in Calcutta, or Kolkata. Uh, B, let's take a look at that. Now, the clues in the architecture, it's, that's Kyoto, Japan. Used to be the capital there. Would have scored you 16 points. C, again, some sort of clues in the, in the architecture there. That's St. Petersburg, which used to be the capital of Russia. Would have scored four points. D, that's actually uh, Lagos, Nigeria. So Nigeria, the answer there. Would have uh, been a pointless answer as well, so very well done if you said that. And E, uh, that is uh, a picture of Rio de Janeiro. So the answer there is Brazil, which would have scored 18. Tough? Very tough, very tough. Now, here comes your second question. Michael and Jeff, you get to go first this time. Our second question concerns... Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, Richard. Yeah, we're about to show you five clues now to facts about uh, Stephen Hawking. Can you answer the most obscure of these? OK, thanks very much. Let's reveal our five clues to Stephen Hawking, and here they come. We have got... He was born on the 300th anniversary of the death of this scientist. The title of his best-selling 1988 popular science book, the US state he took a zero-gravity flight from in 2007, the mathematician with whom he co-wrote The Nature of Space and Time, and he first appeared in this animated US TV series in 1999. I'll read those all one final time. He was born on the 300th anniversary of the death of this scientist, the title of his best-selling 1988 popular science book, the US state he took a zero-gravity flight from in 2007, the mathematician with whom he co-wrote The Nature of Space and Time, and he first appeared in this animated US TV series in 1999. There you are, five clues to facts about Stephen Hawking. Michael and Jeff, off you go. Is it the only one you know? No, it's not. But... Um, we're going to go for question number two, and we believe the answer is a brief history of time. A brief history of time, say Michael and Jeff. A brief history of time. Slim and Marianne, talk us through the rest of the board if you can. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> um, yeah, the only one we think we know is the bottom one, uh, The Simpsons. You're going to say The Simpsons. So we have a brief history of time and we have The Simpsons. Michael and Jeff said a brief history of time. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said that. It's right. Oh, very well done. 17. I think you were going to say The Simpsons. 17 for a brief history of time. Slim and Marianne have gone for The Simpsons. The, he first appeared in this animated US TV series in 1999. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said The Simpsons. Well, it's right. Is it going to go down and beat 17? No, I... Ooh, 41. No. <laughs> Bad luck. Very well done, Michael and Jeff. After two questions, you are up 1-0. Yeah, he's appeared in four episodes of The Simpsons to date, and uh, two of Futurama as well, actually. Let's take a look at the rest of these. Um, now, he was born on the 300th anniversary of the death of Galileo Galilei. And would have scored you three points. Uh, he took uh, the zero-gravity flight, they call it the Vomit Comet. Have you seen this nice. thing? They takes off and does a series of incredible dives, so he was, like, weightless for 25 seconds at a time mm. in this thing. And it uh, took off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Would have scored 11. And the mathematician uh, with whom he co wrote The Nature of Space and Time, first time he's been an answer on this show, it's Sir Roger Penrose. Would have scored you one point. So that's the best answer up there. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much. Now, here comes your third question. Uh, Slim and Marianne, you need to win this one to stay in the game. And it concerns footballers who have been sent off while playing for England. England footballers who've been sent off. Yeah, there haven't been all that many of them. We're about to show you anagrams of five of them now. Can you unscramble them and give us the most obscure? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five footballers in anagram form. And here they are. We have got Backham Dived, Danger Reverts, Annoy Iro, Posh Corlius and Alien Cup. I'll read them a second time. Backham Dived, Danger Reverts, Annoy Iro, Posh Corlius and Alien Cup. 
There we are, five anagrams of England footballers have been sent off while playing for their country. Slim and Marianne, you go first. We know one, I think everyone's going to know it. So I think I've worked out an anagram and I think this person might be a footballer. So we're going to throw caution to the wind. Of course, wind, this plays right into your hands. And we're going to go Paul Ince. Paul Ince. For the one. Paul Ince. Was he even a footballer? I don't Say know. Slim and Marianne. Now then, Michael and Jeff. Um, that's, that was a good one. That, you know, I know people say that a lot, but I, I, I did know that one. Uh, the top one, when we, we know, is David Beckham. That's probably half the world. Um, so we're going to go for the third one, which is Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney, you're going to say for the middle one, Annoy Iro. So we have Paul Ince and Wayne Rooney. Slim and Marianne, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Let's see if you're going to. Paul Ince, how many people said that? It's right. Oh, Ooh, very well done. Eight for Paul Ince. Very well done. Michael and Jeff have gone for Wayne Rooney. Let's see how many people said that. It's right, obviously. Is it going to get anywhere near 17? Maybe even below 17? Ooh, 27. 27. Very well done. Slim and Marianne back in the game. After three questions, it's one all. Very well played, Marianne. Good, uh, good anagram work there. Lucky you didn't say Len Kiapu. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the rest. You're right about avoiding David Beckham at the top there. Backham dived. That would have scored you 68 points. Now, the other two, both very famous England footballers. Danger reverts. It's Steven Gerrard. That would have scored six. And the best answer, I didn't get this one. Very famous England footballer. Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes for three points. So very well done if you got that at home. Thanks very much indeed, and well done, both of you, for getting correct answers. Uh, here comes your fourth question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through and plays for that jackpot. It concerns... Essex. Essex, Richard. Yeah, we're going to give you five clues now to facts about the wonderful county of Essex. Uh, whoever gives us the most obscure answer is going to go through to play to that jackpot. Unless you both give us incorrect answers, then I'm going to have to find another question from somewhere. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. So let's reveal our five clues to facts about Essex, and here they come. We've got the comedian born near Harlow who starred with Aid Edmondson in Bottom, name of the ground that's home to Essex Cricket Club, the official name of the bridge linking Thurrock in Essex to Dartford in Kent, the weapon which appears on the county's coat of arms, and the full name of the popular TV show Towie, which is set in the county. I'll read those all one final time. The comedian born near Harlow, who starred with Aid Edmondson in Bottom, the name of the ground that is home to Essex County Cricket Club, the official name of the bridge linking Thurrock in Essex to Dartford in Kent, the weapon which appears on the county's coat of arms, and the full name of the popular TV show Towie, which is set in the county. So there we are, five clues to facts about Essex. This time, Michael and Jeff, you go first. OK. We're going to go for the comedian born near Harlow, starred with Aid Edmondson in Bottom, is Rick Mail. Rick Mail, say Michael and Jeff. Rick Mail. Slim and Marianne, talk us through that board if you can. OK, well, we think the weapon on the county's coat of arms is swords. Um, Towie is the only way is Essex. And we think the bridge is called the Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth. II bridge, but we're going to go for swords on the... Um, You're going to go for on swords the on the coat of coat arms, of on arms. the county's coat of arms. So, Rick Mayle, say Michael and Jeff. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said Rick Mayle. He's right. 36. <laughs> 36. The crucial thing, that was right, and Slim and Marianne have taken a bit of a punt. Swords, you are saying, feature on the coat of arms of the county. Let's find out if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said swords. It's right. Is that going to beat 36? Yes, it is. Very, very well done indeed. Down it goes to 19. <laughs> we have a result. Very well done, Slim and Marianne. After four questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Um, the official name of the bridge, it's often called the Dartford Crossing, but you're right, it's the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge. 
Now that would have scored you seven points. You're right about Towie. It's the only way Essex uh, would have scored you 58 points. And the name of the ground that's home to Essex County Cricket Club used to be called the County Ground. Now it's called the Ford County Ground. I would have scored you four points. Best answer up there. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, at the end of our head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid the losing pair leaving us is Michael and Jeff. Well, you've had a great game, though. Great game. Obviously, the, the big highlight was Barona Gallagher. <laughs> I can say it now. Uh, but uh, I'm afraid this is where we have to say goodbye. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Michael and Jeff. <laughs> but for Slim and Marianne, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Slim and Marianne. You've beaten off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £4,250. <laughs> well, this is great news. You've done fantastically well. You've come all the way through and here you are in the final. I mean, I I'm always a bit disappointed, though, when this happens, because it means we only get you for one show. But uh, to win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. Firstly, you have to choose a category, and here are your five options. They are European playwrights, royal families, rappers, awards, the Paralympics. OK, well, we're not... It's got to be royal families, Yeah, I it? think, um, yeah, the royal families is the one royal we'll, royal we'll be able to... We'll, get, we'll give royal families a punt. OK. Royal families. Let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many European royals and their spouses as they could. Oh, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the name of any monarch or the, uh, the living spouse of a monarch who's the head of state of any European country, please. Very, very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £4,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I don't know any. Right. <laughs> well, we'll see our own ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I, can, I can think of all the royal <laughs> kings and queens. And no, their kings tell are... me some kings and Frank queens Carlos, of, of Spain. Spain. Yeah. So, let's say Isabella is his wife, shall okay, we? OK, that's a guess. That's a Spanish name. And um, which other... What about Denmark? Sw um, um, Sweden. Who's still got a king and queen? Oh, all the Scandinavian countries. Well, name one. Well, name well, a king. Uh, um... Carl <laughs> <laughs> um, Gustav. Of? Sweden. Carl Gustav but I don't know his Stephen wife's name. And um, Ingrid. We've got to give <laughs> his spouse. Yeah, that's good. Spouse. Ingrid. Carl Gustav um, of Sweden and Ingrid. Juan Carlos of Spain and... Who did you say? I like, Mar I like Mariana, actually, from yeah, Isabella. <laughs> Mariana. Um, and... Um, Ten seconds left. Oh, name another place that's got a king or queen. Um, Holland. OK. Beatrice. Queen Beatrice of Holland. OK, your time is up, I'm sorry to say. We were looking for European royals and their spouses. I now need your three answers. OK, we're going to go King Juan Carlos of Spain. Yes. And his wife... We only need, sorry, we only need the name of a king or a spouse. Oh, yeah. different oh. ball game. We're... Okay, oh, okay, right. right. I'm I gonna thought get... that was really hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, were you not listening to what I said? Well, I was, but then I, I, I sort of was, but then, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so, so... so I'm handing over to Slim, who knows the king of spoons. <laughs> right. Um, Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Of Spain. Beatrice. Beatrice of Holland. The of the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yep. Yeah. And I'll go for Carl Gustav of Sweden. And Carl Gustav of Sweden. Yes. And here they are. We have got Juan Carlos, the first of Spain, Carl Gustav, the 16th of Sweden, and Beatrice of the Netherlands. OK, so we were looking for European royals and their spouses. Uh, your first answer was Juan Carlos of Spain. You only have to find one pointless answer, remember, to win that jackpot of £4,250. So let's see how many people said Juan Carlos of Spain. Is it pointless? He's right. Down it goes. If this goes all the way down to zero, you leave it. Oh, 12. Well done, <laughs> well done. So only two more chances to win today's jackpot. £4,250. Now, that's a decent jackpot. Slim, what would you do with that? Um, we'd have lots of ideas on what we could do with it, but I expect the kids will end up getting it in some shape or form. 
Marianne, um, anything you'd like to ring fence now while you I'd can? I'd like to go to New Orleans, Alexander. Very so good. Would I. <laughs> oh, that would be good. Good Without stuff. Without the kids. <laughs> so we're looking for European royals. Uh, let's hope nobody said your next answer. Carl Gustav of Sweden. Now, again, this has to be right, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £4,250. So let's find out how many people said Carl Gustav of Sweden. Well, he's right. Now, Juan Carlos led us a merry dance all the way down to 12. Carl Gustav of Sweden, on the other hand, taking us down all into single figures. If he goes all the way down to zero, you'd... Oh, three. <laughs> The tease. Down to three. So you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is now riding on your third and final answer. Beatrice of the Netherlands. Well, you thought this was your best shot at a pointless answer. Now, why it's do you not wrong. think it's right? Is it because she hasn't got a number after her <laughs> yeah. name? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, actually. OK, well, we'll find out. Obviously, it has to be correct, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So for £4,250, let's find out. How many people said Beatrice of the Netherlands? Is it pointless? No, oh, Marianne, you're right. <laughs> well, three cracking up. Well, two really good answers there. One, we'll discover what was wrong with Beatrice of the Netherlands, but uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all important, pointless answer. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £4,250. That rolls over onto the next show, but we've loved having you on the show. Thank you both so much Thank for playing. You. And of course, you get to take home the trophy as well. So well done. <laughs> Yeah, you've been brilliant. I hope your classes are watching as well and, uh, and cheering you on. Um, it's Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands. Oh. We couldn't accept Beatrice, but uh, she would have scored you 12 points anyway. She actually abdicated, but she was still queen when we did this poll. Uh, if you'd said Carl Gustav's wife, Sylvia, that would have been a pointless answer, but, uh, you know, who knows that. Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. The some you might have got, uh, King Albert of Belgium. Albert II would have been a pointless answer. Hans Adam II of Liechtenstein is a pointless answer. Henrik of Denmark is a pointless answer. Uh, Mary Theresa of Luxembourg is a pointless answer. There's uh, Marie of Liechtenstein is a pointless answer. Paola of Belgium, a pointless answer. Uh, there's Sylvia of Sweden. And Sonia of Norway, also a pointless answer. Well done if you said any of those at home. Uh, a tough luck, guys. A really, really difficult category. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Slim and Marianne. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, very sadly, Slim and Marianne didn't win our jackpot today, so it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £5,250. Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>